The US can try and regulate it all at once. It'll just move. It's like water. Decentralized networks and global fin finance and money is like water. It flows everywhere. And it's the same with this AI, which is why I don't think we can solve it with regulation. Recently, the SEC has been cracking down on cryptocurrency. The US is one of the only countries doing this right now. What do you think the effect of these regulations will have on the crypto industry? Leave your thoughts in the comments. Crypto family, welcome back to the channel. Aaron here coming back at you with another cryptocurrency video. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. We have new cryptocurrency videos coming out every single day. And in today's clip, we'll be checking out an interview from Raul Paul. And he's talking about what just happened in the United States with the SEC cracking down on cryptocurrency. This is a good one, guys. Raul made some great points in this recent interview he did. He also talks about the benefits of Bitcoin and protecting your wealth with BTC. And he thinks that what the SEC is doing is not going to stop crypto and how there's been a very similar situation that has happened in the past. He talks about that in today's video and how the countries outside of the U.S. will benefit from all of this regulation in the United States if it does go through. But let's go ahead and check it out. Leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Like I said, this is a good one. Let's go ahead and play the clip. With Bitcoin, I treat it as an asset that is going to protect my long-term wealth. And that sounds crazy when it goes up and down like it does, right? And you've just gone through that full first cycle and you're like, oh, 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 oh. But what you'll find is the low is higher than the last time it, it hit the bottom. And then the next low will be higher and each high is higher. Oh, it's in an uptrend. So I just don't need to sweat about the ups and downs. What I should do is just accumulate every time it's in a down cycle. Why? Well, because the down cycle is signifying that economic contraction is happening and that the world is slowing down and money is being taken out of the system, quantitative tightening, which is the opposite process, and assets fall. And interest rates are going up, so your disposable income is going down because your wages aren't going up enough and interest rates have gone up more. So it's at that point you know the outcome is if economic activity is going to slow down, the next year, in, ne in a year's time, they're going to be printing money or cutting rates because it's very cyclical for the phenomena of this rolling of this debt. So therefore, you should be buying more at these points because then you've got the next upside cycle to come, which is what I've always said is it's the cyclical trend within a secular trend. So secular trend is something long term trend driven by a large explainable factor. Uh, Bitcoin is an answer to the financial system and over time the number of users and people who become aware of its um, of its superpower, the more people move across. That is a secular trend of, of, of adoption. That's really important. The cyclical trend, the cyclicality is the ebb and flow within it. So that's the boom bust of the economy. Not at a gigantic bust level. It's just a boom bust. Now, Bitcoin halving cycles correspond with all of this. Why? Is there some magic in that reduction of supply? Maybe. But Bitcoin came out exactly at the same time that all interest rates went to zero. They're all part of the same cycle. So every time we get into this economic cycle, it affects Bitcoin in the same way. But over the long run, the adoption, the secular cycle, means it outperforms everything. Because there's no secular adoption of, of the S&P 500. There's no secular adoption of General Electric. Or, you know, that stuff's not really happening. Yes, there's an ongoing purchasing by 401ks, but that's really it. So, so that big mega trend is the observable trend that people can participate in. And it is going to more than offset what is going on with the debasement of currency. And that's to do with Metcalfe's law and the exponential trend of the adoption of a technological network or a technology itself. Great. So that's why Bitcoin charts over time just keep doing this. It's because it's exponential. The S&P 500 doesn't do that because it's not exponential. But the NASDAQ does.
Most technologies do. And the reason why the NASDAQ keeps outperforming the S&P and keeps outperforming value stocks and makes people so angry is because it's all about the adoption of new technology. If you think about what's been driving the NASDAQ recently, it's the adoption of AI. Obviously, that's the fastest adoption of any technology in history. Crypto was the fastest beforehand, but this has eclipsed it. It's gone from, in six months, from basically zero users to 100 million users in six months. We've never seen anything like it. The biggest AI companies in the world are US, so they're probably going to be a bit softer touch around that. And these guys are playing the usual trick of, we'll be good guys. You don't need to regulate us. We'll kind of do the right thing, right? Because there's too much money available in this equation. So crypto US, because, you know, the US pro, uh, US citizens actually have a lot of capital restrictions. The land of the free is actually pretty unfree. People don't want to deal with US citizens in banks. So if you come to the Cayman Islands or the UK or Spain, and you're a US citizen, you want to open a bank account, nobody wants to open a bank account, really. It's a pain because of the US reporting and the US tentacles, state tentacles, its grip on the global financial system. It, it owns swift payments, it owns everything, and it wants every US citizen to pay its taxes because the, the mother beast needs to feed the debt burden, right? So it's actually very restrictive. So it doesn't like you being able to opt out of the financial system. Okay, but then want to Make sure they get the taxes. It's fine. You're you're a citizen. But different countries have been more loose on it. I think Europe is going to freak out over AI more than the US is. But Europe's been actually better on crypto than the US has. Why? I don't know. But the crypto side of the equation is really important because I've lived this my entire life. Why is London such a big financial centre, considering it's a tiny little island in the middle of a really brown, muddy, cold sea? It's because it speaks English and it has a well-developed financial system and legal rule of law. But what really changed for London was the US coming off the gold standard um, back in 1971 to wherever it was. So that created something called the foreign exchange market because before everything was pegged to gold. Mm. And now the pound and the dollar and the Deutschmark and the yen were all moving around independently. And the US had capital controls because it's got the global reserve currency. It's like, please don't mess around. You know, we've just gone off and changed the global system. We need to be careful. Okay, I get it. Fine. So the UK said, well, all of these people we trade with They need to get access to different currencies now. So the foreign exchange market started, largest market the world had ever seen. Then the US made another false step. So the banks started moving to London, right? Big, lucrative, massive market. Deepened the UK's trade linkages with everybody, financial trade linkages. Next thing happens is now everybody's trading around with currencies. The dollar is the middle currency, the reserve currency. And people want to borrow dollars. And the US is being restricted with its capital. So the UK says, forget it, we'll do it. It became what's known as the Eurodollar market, which is the overseas market for dollar borrowing and lending. That becomes a, we don't know the size of it, but let's call it a $400 trillion market. (laughs) Whoa. And then the US, then we get this big breakthrough in derivatives. The US has got the Chicago Board of Trade doing futures and options and all of this stuff. But we start to figure out more complicated structures, things like swaps. And the US stops its banks doing it by its use of regulatory capital. They're like, no, 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 this is inefficient. You can't do this. The UK and Europe went, well, we're going to regulate and allow it to happen because it's big. We've seen this before. That becomes a quadrillion dollar market. Jesus. That's why every single bank from about 1985, well, particularly after the big bang in London. So let's call it from about 1990 to about 2008, 2010, all the major banks' largest operations were London. So Goldman Sachs' biggest operation, most profitable, London. 
Merrill Lynch, London. Well, Merrill Lynch is different because it was a brokerage firm. But JP Morgan, they're all London. So London, if you've been watching the news, is going to do the same thing. It's called regulatory arbitrage. London is putting together a very sensible set of crypto rules. As has Europe, as has Switzerland, as has Singapore, as has Hong Kong, as has Australia. Okay, there's its old trading group that it did with euro dollars and it did with derivatives and it did with foreign exchange, all got their regulations in place. The UK is the hub at the middle and it will capture the lion's share. And before you know it, Coinbase, Gemini and everybody will move to London. There'll still be listed firms in the US, but they will move. And this is the issue with the AI and crypto. You can't shut it down. Because if it is productive and it has value and it has future expected value that's higher than today, it will go somewhere. And if we look at the crypto market now, it's a trillion dollars. Okay, that's meaningful for the UK economy. Where is it going to go? Well, 10, 30, 50 trillion. Well, the UK wants that pie because it shot itself in the foot after Brexit. Um, So... The U.S. can try and regulate it all at once. It'll just move. It's like water. Decentralized networks and global finance and money is like water. It flows everywhere. And it's the same with this AI, which is why I don't think we can solve it with regulation. Mm. Because somebody's going to have the profit motive. And thank you guys for watching all the way to the end of the video. And like I said, please leave a comment in the comment section. I would love to get your guys' thoughts on this, whether you're a Bitcoin maxi or you're just crypto only. Definitely want to hear all your thoughts. Put it in the comment section below and like the video if you found any value. But my name is Aaron from the Bitcoin Bros. I'm out. I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a great rest of your day.